We had a crazy red day on Friday. Many stocks were down 2, 3, 4, 5%, even 6% for stocks like JP Morgan. It's been a little bit crazy. And I saw a lot of people on Twitter, they were a little bit upset because we had such a red day and everything is going down. And it hurts. It hurts because we had so many green days. Once you have so many green days and we have one or two red days, you tend to feel that they are worse than they are. But if you look at the bigger picture, I mean, this pullback to me is nothing. This is what I post on Twitter. It's nothing. I and mean, just look at this chart. We've been going straight up since October. I've said in my videos, this is not normal. We need to have some fear in the market. We need to have some pullbacks, some doubts. We need to average down instead of averaging up. Every time I bought a stock, I've been averaging up. Now I can finally start to average down. And this is one of the reasons why I'm getting very excited. I don't get very excited in the videos, but I'm getting excited lately because I'm finally starting to see opportunities. This is, to me, the times where I want to be looking into stocks, the times where I want to be doing things, buying and doing many different things. I'm going to share with you what I recently did in my portfolio and why I believe the market is pulling back in general. I'm not trying to predict the market, but this is just a video I do every week or two, trying to update you on my thoughts on the market. But but if you just look at the basic index, fear and greed index, which is made of the VIX, made of a lot of pull options, call option ratios, and many different things, it's, it's not too bad. I used to hate it, but I think it's pretty accurate it's been. We're still at neutral. We're not even in fear territories. I mean, this pullback is really nothing. We're still in neutral. If you look at the timeline of the chart, the last time we were in fear or we even touched somewhat of an extreme fear was back in October of 2023 when people were calling for the next 2008. This is where I was finding amazing buying opportunities and now we're still at neutral we're not even in the fear territory so it could get much worse before it gets better in my opinion in terms of the reasons why the s p 500 has been somewhat pulling back lately over the last few days it's only one and a half percent on the week but the reason it's been pulling back a little bit was because inflation was surprising to the upside and if inflation is surprising to the upside it could cause a lot of investors to believe that maybe the fed is not going to be cutting rates three times in 2024 i was one of the people that thought that inflation was transitory that it's not going to rise again and the fed's going to cut at least three times in 2024 but i noticed the trend has started to shift and this is why i started making these bearish videos i Made this video three weeks ago everything i talked about is happening right now and it's called inflation is hot and speculation is taking over and i talked about the chance of us having a catalyst for a pullback which is us having higher inflation which could cause investors perception to change and to believe that maybe we're not going to have rate cuts or worst case we might have another hike before we have another rate cut maybe in 2025 or after and a lot of the stocks in the s p 500 especially the magnificent seven a lot of them are starting to get priced to perfection they are priced on three rate cuts well if we're not going to have the rate cuts or if we have one more hike or if the fed just talks about having one more hike this could cause a massive change in sentiment but we also had a lot of speculation i talked about soundhound.ai and a lot of the ai stocks and seeing rallying like uh, crazy and this is not something that happens at stock market bottoms it happens the other way when you have a lot of excess and a lot of greed in the market so this is why i made these videos many of you were were telling me in the comments why I switched from being so bullish to so bearish. Well, it's because the facts were changing and they have been changing recently. And this is why the S&P has been going down. Now, I have to say, and I said it in my videos before, I am not calling for a stock market crash in 2024. I think it's not going to happen in 2024. And the only indicators that I can tell it's pretty close to 100% accuracy is the 10 year minus the three months, which is the yield curve. And the yield curve had inverted many times before. And every time the yield curve went negative, after it went positive, we had a recession and we had some kind of a major stock market pullback or a stock market crash, like what happened in 2008. It went negative in 2006. 2008 flipped positive. And this is when we had the recession. This is where we had the market crash. Same thing in the 2000, 99, 2000 dot com bubble crash. Same thing. Same thing happened before COVID. Although, yes, COVID might have been the catalyst, but we still had a weak economy before that manufacturing was contracting and there was many different indicators that are pointing to a weak economy and this is happening again and the yield curve is deeply inverted it's been inverted the most in the last i think 30 or 35 years but it's nowhere close to being positive 
And this is why I'm not calling for a major crash or a major recession. It's been accurate 100% of the time. So I wouldn't really doubt this indicator. And what I've been calling for in my video is more of a smaller pullback, meaning a repricing of stocks. They have to reprice. No rate cuts for 2024 if we have higher inflation or maybe one more hike, which is a massive difference from where stock valuations are trading right now. And this could cause us to have a smaller pullback in 2024. And according to the yield curve, it's nowhere close to turning positive. If we do turn positive in late 2024, the recession and the crash could potentially happen in 2025. So this is why I'm not calling for a major crash. I'm, not, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of videos on YouTube if we have two more, three more red days. You know, 2008 crash, stock market crash. This is normally the best time to be buying the dip on a lot of the stocks. Remember, you see a lot of stock market crash videos out of a 1% or 2 or 3% pullback in the S&P 500. But the most important indicator that I'm watching is not telling us that we're going to have a major crash in 2024, more of a smaller pullback. We have some fear in the market. People start doubting. They sell stocks. We buy stocks if you're a long-term investor. And, uh, you know, we have some fear and then we just move on. This is what I believe will likely happen in uh, 2024 in terms of a very basic chart, which I'm not a professional or an expert technical analyst, but this is a trend line that we held since we bottomed in October of 2023, which was an amazing time to be buying stocks. And I had amazing buying opportunities then. I hope we get it again. But this is a trend line. And we did break the trend line. Then we tried to break out of it. We did. We tested it. We failed. Then we went down. So if I had to guess, I would guess we see another 6% down on the S&P in 2024, maybe back to 4,800, which is not unreasonable. We were at 4,800 in, I mean, in February, January, which is absolutely crazy. This is how far we went. And you just can't keep going up forever. You need some fear in the market. You need some doubts. You need things to cool off a little bit to have a healthy long-term rally. So I don't know why people would be upset. I'm personally extremely excited about such things happening because I'm starting to see some opportunities in the market. I'm not saying these stocks are bargains, but this is just an example of what I'm starting to see. Stocks like McDonald's is down 5% on the month, which is a huge move for McDonald's. It's not as volatile as you believe. Starbucks, it's down more than that, but it's showing down 7% on the month. United Healthcare, amazing company, 439, 10% on the month. Bristol Myers, another stock I'm watching, down 8.5% on the month. There's a lot of REITs that have been VC properties, been going down. Many different opportunities that are starting starting to show up. So this is why I'm getting very excited that I'm finally starting to see some opportunities to do something because I'm sick of averaging up. I'm sick of trying to, you know, just value these stocks and then they move after I finish the valuation model. I'm sure maybe you could relate. So this could be an amazing opportunity. Maybe we bottom on Friday and maybe Monday is going to be up and we make a new high. But for me, if inflation continues this way, and if the Fed signals a potential rate hike, even though they don't hike, I think we could go much, much lower, potentially close to 4,800, maybe 4,850, which in my opinion would be an amazing buying opportunity in many different stocks. So I hope you have a watch list or some kind of you know, stocks you'd love to buy at the right price. I have my stocks. I'm going to share a little bit of them later on in the next few videos. But this is just my opinion on the S&P. I'm not seeing a major crash. I'm seeing a short pullback, which is normal, which is healthy. And then maybe we can continue on on the S&P until the yield curve turns positive. Once it turns positive, this is when I would be starting to worry. But what I mainly did in my portfolio, and I did share my strategy in one video, you could check it out. So what I mainly did, I started getting out of shorter term positions. I have shorter term positions that I start whenever the S&P and stock market is going up and I'm not finding much value. So I do buy them and I have like a place where I would exit them and I've been positive on some of them so I started taking profits or selling some stocks some of them at a slight loss and to raise a little bit of cash because I'm starting to see amazing uh, buying opportunities in longer term investments which are very important to me so this is what I've been doing and this is just my opinion on the S&P not financial advice thank you for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it if you did please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing so I hope to see you in another video.